with EJ McCoy, CEO and co-founder of several home service brands, including the Pet Waste Millionaire brand. And we want to talk a little bit about um, what this brand represents in the macro scale and the mission that we're on right now in raising awareness of the pet waste removal industry. Um, hear about its infancy stages. Well, I guess we're really in the infancy stages we're very at much the moment. So still in the infancy stages. Uh, but how it started, how, uh, some of the campaigns that we're on right now and how those are going, and then what the future looks like for this brand. So EJ, tell us, how did the Pet Waste Millionaire brand start? Yeah, so the Pet Waste Millionaire brand is inspired by the person who probably had uh, the biggest impact on my uh my entrepreneurial experience, mm -hmm. which was the lawn care millionaire, Jonathan Potoshinik. Um, Jonathan established the lawn care millionaire, not because he was looking to be braggadocious. In fact, he makes it pretty clear. Mm -hmm. He's a pretty humble guy anyways, yeah. that he never intended to be the lawn care millionaire. He wanted to inspire lawn care millionaires. Um, and he did that and he wanted to do that to build his technology business, yeah. Service Autopilot, which we're longtime clients of. Um, so it's inspired from that, but it's also... Uh, the idea is to really talk about and to catalog our journey in the pet waste industry and to, as you mentioned, to bring awareness to the pet waste industry. It's become very clear to me over the dozen years that I've been in this industry, and it's not really any different than when I started 2011 in 2011 uh, in my pet waste removal entrepreneur journey. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not much different today that you constantly hear people, whether it be through social media or whether it be when we're doing these events in person ser serving our franchisees mm. uh, to bring awareness to the local marketplace, how few people know that the industry exists. Yeah, And so in part, Pet Waste Millionaire is there to literally just get awareness out there to the industry and to elevate the industry. It's out there to help educate the industry. Again, what's going to elevate the, the industry? More, more awareness and elevation and education of our fellow pet waste removal business owners. Professionalizing it. Professionalizing it, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then the other piece is to inspire entrepreneurship. Uh, I'm a huge believer in the American dream and that the American dream is still very much so attainable. I'm a testament to that. I'm not college educated. I struggled in school. I struggle to this day with various learning disabilities. I have ADD like no other, but I'm also dyslexic and have a really hard time sometimes comprehending. I have to reread things three or four times. I am not, as I talk about and will someday write my book on, I'm speaking that now, will someday write my book on not being the sharpest tool. But I'm a testament to the American dream that if you just have the desire, the want, the ambition, mm -hmm. and you work towards it every single day, you work towards being better. You work towards having positive relationships and being a positive, having a positive impact on your communi community, uh, that you can reach your version of success. Mm -hmm. And mine was, always was, I've always been an ambitious business person. And so I found it in Pet Waste. And that's why our tagline is find your gold. Uh, so Pet Waste Millionaire's tagline, find your gold, because I found my gold in Pet Waste. And of course, in lawn mowing and other mm -hmm. simple services and recurring services, I'm looking to expand beyond that because I'm an ambitious entrepreneur. But I want to inspire people through this brand that you can find your gold doing pet waste just like I have. That's great. And, and let's collaborate together on that. Mm -hmm. But you can also find your gold doing a number of other skilled trades, everything from plumbing to lawn mowing to pest control to things I don't do yet, but someday hope to do, which is garage door repair and uh, other general contracting services. There's so much potential in these skilled trades. Mm -hmm. But maybe even beyond that and just pull out the entrepreneurial spirit that's in all of us. I think that there is nothing but good that can come from the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. How would you define success for the Pet Waste Millionaire brand? For the brand itself, like mm -hmm. what, like what do I see for it in the future in yeah. terms of success? Uh, I envision it. I want it to. I want it to first bring value to people, sure, and to 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 impact people and to inspire people that they can uh, embark and take risk and become entrepreneurial in mm -hmm. whatever they do, whether it be a side hustle to, to, to a job that they love and that they're passionate about, whether it be an exit strategy to mm -hmm. a job that they hate. Mm -hmm. um, I want it to inspire people and to move people, but I also want it to hopefully bring relationships, br bring, bring partnerships into our system. We want more partnerships through franchising, but even beyond franchising, I, j just getting to know people within yeah. the industry. 
Um, and I don't mean just the pet waste industry, yeah. although I would say we want to start there. Uh, but I have ambition to uh, uh, be a part of the home services community as a whole. Again, plumbing, H HVAC, you name it, all the way to lawn mowing. Mm -hmm. So I hope that this brand gets awareness out there to our businesses and our vision. I also think we have a story to tell. I think we've done some pretty unique things in bringing people into business and mm -hmm. helping the people around us within our community that want to be in business for themselves or that dream of being in business for themselves, helping them do that. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's whether it's our franchisees that started out working with us in a different way and are now business owners in their own right, uh, or whether it's my friend Jeremy Langlitz and yourself as, as we embark as a partnership on White Picket Team and work to bring and professionalize accounting and bookkeeping that is specialized to the home services industry. Yeah. Yeah, I think another um, perspective to have is that the Pet Waste Millionaire brand is successful when it's not necessarily tied to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not a micromanager. Yeah. I don't want to be a micromanager. I want to be able to build stuff that eventually can be delegated. And so mm -hmm. I do envision long term that the Pet Waste Millionaire brand is far beyond me. Yeah. It's about it's other people creating content mm -hmm. on, uh, on the Pet Waste Millionaire platform. Mm -hmm. And maybe they've got a, a story that is not that they're a pet waste millionaire yet, but maybe they're working to be that, or maybe they're working to find their gold in something else. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be in pet waste or yeah. even home services. It's, it could be, it could be something completely different. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for the day the pet waste millionaire brand is through credible resources, attributing the principles and, and the mindsets that we're teaching here to raising and professionalizing home services industry yeah that'll exactly. be a really good day exactly no, you're exactly right yeah I, I look forward to that so the um in in the stages of developing like the name and the logo and the mission and, uh, and those types of things we don't even have that. i'm literally working on that we're five months in well i think you i mean i just outlined it but yeah as far as having an official mission statement like we still need one fair enough uh, still yeah. working on it yeah. And I got to make sure it's not like four sentences long. It needs to be short and sweet. And that's not always my strong suit. But beyond that, so um, in those early stages, we uh, kind of coupling with developing the look and feel of the brand and the intent of the brand also decided on the takeover tour and how those two things, those things are in came alignment. very much together. Yeah. Simultaneously. Like yeah. the Pet Waste Millionaire brand and an establishment of it didn't exist until the bus existed yeah and the t-pig takeover tour and the whole concept of uh getting awareness out of our brand and mm -hmm. of course the pet waste industry as a whole yeah so that's what i want you to talk about is the uh the establishment of the t-pig takeover tour what is it what are we doing so we had this idea of the t-pig takeover tour we were doing media for about six eight nine months maybe even a year depending on how you're going to measure it we've been practicing but mm -hmm. we were operating under ej mccoy just my name and these two things kind of came together and collided like okay we've had some major expansion at scoop soldiers where we've more than doubled our mm -hmm. franchise territories in a matter of three months uh how do we get awareness for that but how do we get awareness for our general brand and get and start really focusing on franchisee support. And so this idea of celebrating our, our expansion and, and, and doing a tour came from one of our creative, uh, mm -hmm. our, our multimedia director uh, and producer. And so he had this idea that we could almost have this road rule style reality show documenting our journey all across the country in a big RV that's fully wrapped uh, and, and bringing awareness to our expansion and to the pet waste industry, mm -hmm. tie that into, well, okay, we want to, we want to establish a brand and get awareness out there. EJ McCoy maybe just doesn't quite do it. And we had been tinkering with pet waste millionaire. We've got inspiration, uh, from it, uh, from it. And it was just a decision that we kind of made together in some ways y'all really pushed for, uh, and, and I, agreed with over time i had to grow on me a little bit but but i agreed with over time that it's a risk it is a risk it's probably one of yeah. the bigger risks i've taken especially putting yeah. ourselves out there um and spending money to do it not mm -hmm. knowing what the return will be or for how long it will take to get it yeah well i certainly fully believe in in what we're doing uh and believe in the um that our mission of professionalizing the industry and bringing awareness to it will happen
it has to happen. <laughs> it has to. So um, we've been on the road for five months. Yep. About five months. How is the how's the tour going? Tour is going great um, on on a lot of fronts. And so if we look at uh, we look at it really from two fronts: franchisee support. We're doing these events in all of these markets. Uh, most of the time they're at dog bar. Sometimes they're just at restaurants where we're literally just sponsoring mm-hmm. a happy hour uh, in return for uh, an elevator pitch talking about pet waste removal industry and bringing Get awareness subscribers. And, and getting subscribers for Pet Waste Millionaire and Scoop Soldiers uh, for people to follow along on our journey. Uh, that part's going great uh, in terms of getting awareness out there. I, I literally, I, I would say more than half of the people I talk to, sometimes even at these dog bars where it's already all, do- it's all dog right. owners. And you ask, do, do you, have you ever heard of a pet waste removal service? And they say no. And I've literally had, I've asked five people back to back and had five people say, no, I did not know this service existed <laughs> at a dog bar where yeah. they have. <laughs> so it's crazy to me. And so that's gone. That's going great. We're getting awareness out there. Mm-hmm. Um, building the following online. It's slow. Who knows? It might take four years. Yeah. Um, and so that part's gone great. We've more than tripled our subscriber base in five months. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we started with a really small subscriber base. And so we're still pretty small. Um, I'd love to be 10 times our current subscriber base. That'd be course, great. Yeah. Uh, but that'll always be the case. Um, but more recently, we had the bus coming into Kansas City. So it made it from Texas to Florida, up the coast, and into, well, into Atlanta, and then, and then into North Carolina, cut over to Nashville. Everything went pretty smooth on all of that as far as the operation of this 43-foot bus. Uh, Pause real quick. Also, when we're going to these different locations, we're meeting with our, our fran- the Scoop Soldiers franchisees. We're doing, uh, we're calling T-Pig initiatives where we're, in each of these markets we're going to brick and mortar locations we're passing out print material we're talking to people we're getting the word out outside of just you know a sponsorship of a happy thank you there's there's lots that we're doing uh in each of these markets for our franchisees while we're there thank you well said and this is a perfect example as to why it's not all just me (laughs) It, it it's a team it's a team thing sure uh so thank you no you you definitely uh wanted to allude uh or mention that thank you so we're coming into Kansas City earlier this week, and the front passenger side tire of the bus blows out. And when you have a blowout on a tire this size, apparently it's fairly common that damage ensues. Luckily, Edwin kept the bus on the road, mm-hmm. did a fantastic job getting the bus off the road safely, no uh, accidents, everybody was safe. But there was definitely damage to that entire fender and that mm-hmm. entire section of the bus that the bus might be out of service for mm-hmm. a few months. It's definitely got me questioning the logic of a bus <laughs> half of our tour the first year is gonna be out. That's uh that's painful. Yeah. But we gotta stay the course. Yeah. We we we've gotta keep <sighs> going. Can we get the TRX wrapped? We're not getting the TRX <laughs> wrapped. Somebody else asked me that already. We're not gonna do that, but we are gonna keep going. We're gonna keep on with the tour. As challenging as it may be, whatever comes our way, mm-hmm. we're going to keep on going. Have to. We have to. Yeah. So um, we are. Uh, how how long do you anticipate this campaign to go on the takeover tour? The the campaign. So right now I'm speaking three years. Um, Ooh, went up a year. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've said two, but about about three months ago. So you haven't been listening very well because it was like three months ago that I started I saying never three to me anyway. But it's probably good that you don't, because as much as it could go on three years, it might only be it might only be the end of this year. Who knows? Yeah. Um, uh, I would hope that it will go on another two years. Yeah. To to, to with the work we've put into mm-hmm. it, it really needs to be a multi year project. Yeah. But as an entrepreneur, I always reserve the right to change my mind, <laughs> uh, to reverse course or to change course. I'm, you know. I'm the opposite of perfect. And a lot of times as an entrepreneur, you get really into something and you work it and you work it and you get work passionate. it and you get passionate about it. And when it comes to something like the tour, you've got to change gears. You got to shift. Maybe it becomes not so much a bus, but we're just flying out doing these events, um, staying in the La Quintas, like we're about to be staying in instead of the bus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The, the, but we always reserve, I always reserve that right as an entrepreneur because yeah. So can you speak to how the Scoop Soldiers brand and Pet Waste Millionaire brand coincide while we're on tour? Uh, 
Think of it like a, a sponsorship or a partnership. Pet Waste Millionaire has partnered with Scoop Soldiers uh, to both to help to, 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 to collaborate together to bring awareness to the industry mm -hmm. on the Pet Waste Millionaire side. Let's bring awareness to the industry. Let's build this following. Let's inspire entrepreneurs. Scoop Soldiers is partnered with Pet Waste Millionaire to hopefully over time bring in more relationships mm -hmm. to the brand. Uh, that might be franchisees. That might be W-2 employees that we literally expand expand and partner with mm -hmm. uh, to expand to their marketplace. Uh, but it's a partnership where, as I mentioned, Scoop Soldiers is talking about its takeover tour. It's, it's bringing awareness to its brand. It's giving out, you know, first Scoop free cards. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're doing. You mentioned the T-Pig initiative where we're going and literally going to other dog-oriented businesses. Those dog-oriented businesses, we're not going into those businesses talking about Pet Waste Millionaire. We're talking about Scoop Soldiers. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about the uh, expansion we've had across the country the last five, six, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and that inspires people. And that's, and of course, that's, of course, where Pet Waste Millionaire comes in is to inspire entrepreneurship by saying, look, here's this company that just scoops dog poop. These two guys just started picking up dog poop with mechanics gloves and grew it from two customers to, to 15,000 plus customers and growing. And if you can, if they can do this in pet waste removal, mm -hmm. where could you find your gold as a, as an aspiring entrepreneur? Yeah. Love and it. so it's a partnership. Yeah. Well, they certain, certainly feed into one another and I'm confident, um, confident in what we're doing with it. I'm confident that it is a huge value add to the Scoop Soldiers brand specifically. Yeah. Uh, I should also mention, I hope it brings some entertainment value. I mean, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We scoop dog poop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so hopefully there's an entertainment value aspect to it and that it, we're, we're trying to bring in entertainment yeah. value because we're trying to bring in more, more viewers to again, let people know about this industry. Yeah. It's going well. It's fun. Mostly fun. Mostly. Mostly fun. What's the least fun part of it? Uh, being cameraman, having, having to, being backup having cameraman, to coordinate everything. That's the least fun part. Yeah. Good. We can actually. We're gonna. We need to talk about having Brian Jones start doing a lot of that anyway. Wonderful. <laughs> Brian, stay tuned. <laughs> um, any final words on the Pet Waste Millionaire brand? Um, again, I, I want to. I want to end with where I started. the The intent of this brand is to inspire entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. to celebrate the American dream. If we can do it, you can do it. It's just a matter of finding your gold. And, and, and again, it doesn't have to be something you love. I did not love scooping dog poop. I'm not like some weirdo that loves something about poop. I love dogs, but I, and I love business. And this is just where I found that I can mine for gold. Yeah, love it. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you.